Isolation. Blue skies above blown out windows. Amid the absurdity, there is hope. Local builders are donating time and materials. The guys in the white hats are builders. Today, they're rebuilding. We call several of our vendors, and they've all donated material, and we're, uh, we're donating material. I think this must have been from a child to the west. Before anyone can build anything, they have to clean up, sporting out memories from debris. Uh, but it won't be easy. Not only are whole homes in shards, some of the pieces aren't even in the right place. This is Mark and Vera Samora's mattress, but they don't live here. They live across the way. Last night during the storm, they rode it 100 feet like a magic carpet out of harm's way. Uh, he just grabbed me and we just held on tight and said, I love you, I love you, because we thought we were going to die. And, um, and we just somehow we managed to stand up and started running, trying to find another house. Today, volunteers look for other houses to clean up. They just came by and asked if they needed help. As simple as that. Plenty to do. Plenty of landscape to turn into firewood, made a little easier by donations. Leslie Boney, WRAL-TV News, Raleigh. It seems even too cruel to comprehend, but police tonight are fighting a battle with looters. And Drew Griffin has a live report in the Hampton Oaks subdivision, where, Drew, we understand that police are beefing up patrols out there already. They are, as you can see. Officers are checking everyone uh, who comes in. They will check the car and make sure the person lives here. It does seem cruel, Charlie, but uh, so far this evening, as of this evening, 16 people have been arrested for looting. Uh, nine of those arrested appeared in Wake County Court today, where bonds were set at $1,500 to $5,000 each. The arrested coming as far away as Garner and Wake Forest to try and steal from the rubble, and police are beefing up their patrols to stop them. Up his police patrols and staffing in that area. I understand that Sheriff Baker has also stepped up some of his patrols in the area. We put on some all-night patrols with the highway patrol. We had six, six cars in the area where we normally don't have anybody. And uh, so the police patrols are increasing. I understand that they're also using high-intensity lights around the businesses. And uh, I think they're having... The Miracle Mets come from behind and are world champs. This is Eyewitness News with Ernie Anastas, Heidi Tong, Storm Field, Eli Zarrett, Corey McFerrin, and the Eyewitness News team with special coverage of the big game. Good evening, everyone. Aren't we all excited? The amazing Mets have worked their magic. They are the champions of baseball. Indeed, they are. What a finish. An outpouring of emotion at Shea Stadium. 55,000 fans exploded into thunderous applause when the Mets just wouldn't give up and did their best to run the Red Sox out of town. The final score, New York 8, Boston 5. Police had their hands full trying to tame the fired-up crowd. And Corey McFerrin is at Shea live right now in the locker room with the Mets' amazing win. Corey. Hey, Kitey, we're just outside the Mets' locker room. The champagne celebration continues. This is a madhouse down here. The Mets win their first world title since 1969, and they do it again in typical dramatic fashion. Down 3-0 through five innings. They come from behind to win it 8-5. This place is going crazy. If you didn't see the final out of the game, I'm going to show it to you one more time. Jesse Orozco on the hill. You got Marty Barrett at the plate. Two strikes on him. The pitch. Swing and a miss. That's it. Look at Orozco. The mid up in the air. And the Mets have won the world.